What a race. What a race that was at Kansas Speedway. We got a lot to talk about when it comes to Kansas Speedway and today's Advent Health 400, the closest finish in NASCAR history on this week's edition of Car on the Holler. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, comment your thoughts on this video. What did you think of the Advent Health 400? Did you think it was the best race of the season like I did? Let me know in the comments. Plus, let me know any improvements I can make on the channel. All right, let's get right into this race. It was the most entertaining race of the season. It had great racing. It even had some chaos and drama in the last stage. Just phenomenal racing. And this race once again proved how strong and how good the racing is with the next-gen car at the mile and a half and intermediate tracks. This race ended up starting a couple hours late because of a rain delay. And I think that made the race even better. Because I was able to sit down and watch Lando Norris win the Miami Grand Prix. I was really happy to see that. And then afterwards, I got the best race of the season in the Cup Series. And I love those races in the Cup Series where it starts in the day and it ends in the night. I love that. I love that feeling. It's just It just makes the race that more epic, in my opinion. We saw great racing throughout the day. That first stage was full of... Larson versus Chastain, Larson versus Hamlin, Hamlin versus Chastain. Those three kept on going back and forth, especially Larson and Chastain in that very first stage. It was phenomenal racing. I was so entertained by what we saw in the first stage. Are you not entertained? Then we got to the second stage, and as the race went on, you began to see a couple of drivers begin to pick up their pace as the track began to change. And two drivers I got to name immediately are Chris Busher and Kyle Busch. I caught during the broadcast that Larry Mack accidentally called Chris Busher Kyle Busch when he went flying through the middle five wide. Yeah, we had five wide at one point today. It was a crazy race. But also with a couple of drivers getting faster as the track changes, there was a couple that began to fall back. Most notably, Ross Chastain. Yeah, when we got to the third stage of this race, Ross Chastain was was absent. Honestly, I don't even know where he finished. He wasn't competing for the win, was not competing for a top five at the end of this race. And those last hundred laps of this race were pure chaos, plus some great racing and strategy. There was a good 20 to 30 lap span where these drivers just could not clean it up. Cautions breed cautions, and we had caution after caution after caution during this gap until the drivers finally began to clean it up. And once they cleaned it up, we saw a strategy begin to develop. We saw there late in the race that there was a potential that this could be a fuel strategy finish. We had Denny Hamlin and Chris Busher at the front of the field, saving little bits of gas at a time, trying to make it to the finish line. It was quite questionable if they were going to make it to the finish. One of the drivers that was good on fuel was my driver, Kyle Busch, who had a great day running in the top three. Most of the race at one point looked like he could have been the winner of the race, leading a bunch of laps, which was awesome to see. It's been a very tough season as a Kyle Busch fan. But with just a couple of laps left, I think Kyle Busch was just trying to get after it a little bit too much. Ended up losing the car coming out of turn two, bringing the caution out with only a few laps to go. And I'm going to say it right now. If that caution did not come out, if Kyle Busch didn't spin, Martin Truex Jr. would have won this race. He was flying in those last couple of laps before we got the caution, and he was good on fuel. So, of course, with most of the field having many, many laps on their tires, over 50 laps on their tires, they decided to come down pit lane, and this was the most important race off pit road all race long. And Hamlin and Busher end up getting off pit road one and two. Hamlin was struggling on pit road all race long, struggling to get out of his pit box, got held up on pit lane by Ryan Priest at one point as well. 
But it looked like finally heading on this last restart that Denny Hamlin was actually going to come out where he went in. But then we get this green-white checkered restart and finish, and Kyle Larson made a hell of a move. Denny Hamlin even mentioned in his post-race interview that he knew Larson was probably going to do that, and he did it, and he did it very successfully, putting Hamlin behind him. Larson decided to jump to the inside lane, make it three wide, heading into one and two. Hamlin had to back out of it, and then it ended up becoming Larson versus Busher for the finish. And let me tell you, this battle was epic. Now, this is epic. They were neck and neck, hitting each other almost up into the wall in three and four. I thought they were both going to crash into the outside wall, and Truex and Elliott were going to go past, and they were going to have their photo finish for the win. But they ended up making it through turns three and four without wrecking. They made contact off of turn four. They come all the way down. Larson hits Busher very hard in the door, almost pushing Busher into the grass. And we had this epic close finish, the closest finish in NASCAR Cup Series history. And from the camera angle we saw live, I thought Busher had the race won. The pylon said that Chris Busher won. I jumped up and I'm like, yes, Chris Busher gets the win. Christopher Busher wins at Kansas Speedway. I was hyped. I was jumping around so hyped for Chris Busher. I like Chris Busher. He's a good guy and deserved the win. Looked really strong all day. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kyle Larson wins the race. There was a lot of confusion, not just from the fans, but also from the teams. As you saw, the 17 team begin to celebrate as they thought they won at Kansas Speedway in the Advent Health 400. Scoring, though, said something different. 0.001, the margin of victory for Kyle Larson, only winning by one thousandth of a second. We've had some insane close finishes in NASCAR history. The race between Craven and Bush at Darlington comes to mind. The tandem drafting at Talladega comes to mind. I think that was technically a closer finish by time, but not by distance. Don't, don't quote me on that. And then earlier on in the season at Atlanta, we had that epic three wide finish. So another fantastic classic finish in NASCAR history. I, I can't believe what I just saw. I'm still a little shaken by it. I got blisters on me fingers! But that had to have been one of the best races I have ever seen. Probably the best race in the next-gen era for NASCAR. Because if you really think about it, this race had everything. The only problem with this race is it got rain-delayed by like three or four hours. You had constant passing, back-and-forth racing. You had comers and goers. You had a bunch of drama. You had a strategy thrown in, and you had a photo finish. The only way this race could have been any better if there was a fight. Then there's a fight in the infield. That's the only way this race would have gotten any better. I, you can tell I'm extremely hyped. I'm usually not this hyped up in my post-race videos, but I can, I'm just so excited to talk about this race. This race was so fantastic. But this is the happy side of the coin. There's always the other side of the coin. I'm not a good mitten. I'm a, I'm a bad mitten. Once again, not a good day overall for Ford. It looked like Ford had finally gotten their first win of the season with Chris Buescher. I would have ate my words because I said last week, I don't know if they're going to win until Daytona. Chris Buescher almost made me eat those words immediately. But other than Buescher, there wasn't a lot of Fords being strong throughout the day. Once again, the Penske cars were really weak. Even Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney did not show much speed throughout the day. The Stuart Haas cars were, were worthless. The Stuart Haas cars were running outside the top 30 all day, except for Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson had a great race, actually. I'd say he was the best Ford other than Busher all day. I did see that Brad Keselowski did come on late. He ended up getting a pretty good finish for the number six team, got a top 10. That's good for him. But overall, another bad day for Ford, if you'd ask me. Once again, not able to get into victory lane. And overall, the team as a whole did not look strong. And then let's talk about 2311 Racing. I was hyping them up in my preview because they've been so dominant at this racetrack. Ever since the next-gen cars started coming to Kansas Speedway, this has been 2311 Racing Speedway. And they were absent, both of them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. 
Tyler Reddick was running in the back half of the top 10 late, I saw. And Bubba Wallace was, let's, let's be honest, Bubba Wallace was awful today. I'm wearing my Bubba Wallace shirt. He was my pick for the day. I picked him to win in my preview. I picked him throughout the whole week. I was very confident that he would show speed on Sunday, but he barely had a top 15 car. He he did not look good at all today. And it's not like Bubba necessarily had a horrible day. I just had such high expectations for him. Same thing for Reddick. I had high expectations for him as well, and neither of them seemed very strong today at all. And it was very disappointing to see. Okay, all right, okay. Now I got to talk a little bit about Kyle Busch because I am heartbroken. I'm not going to, going with this excitement, there's a little bit of heartbreak in there because I really thought today was the day that Kyle Busch ended that 32 race winless streak. Ugh, I'm heartbroken. Why are you crying? (laughs) Yeah, Kyle Busch ran in the top five, top three, all race long. Late in the goings, even looked like he had a great shot at the victory, especially when fuel strategy came into the mix. It looked like if Truex wasn't going to win, it was probably going to be Kyle Busch. And he he self-spun out of two, and that's been a big story point for him all year and in the next-gen era. I don't think there's any driver that's made more mistakes in the next-gen cars, had more self-spins than Kyle Busch. But he did have an impressive last restart. He restarted like 20th. Ended up coming back to get an 8th place finish with just 2 laps to go. So he he had a fast car. Had potentially a winning car. But let's talk Kyle Larson. I feel like we've kind of talked a little bit about everybody that was involved with this battle. Except for the winner, Kyle Larson. Larson was strong all day. Honestly, he's the one that deserved the win because he was running out in the front. All race long. He was either leading the race or he was chasing down the leader all race long. Him and Denny Hamlin, I'd say, were the only two drivers who had one of the best cars throughout the whole entire race. Busher had some speed early, but he had a fifth or sixth place car. Once it began to get darker and the track began to change a little bit, he picked it up in speed a little bit. And you had someone like Chastain who really fell off at the end of this race. Early on in the race, seemed like we were going to have another epic Hamlin-Larson battle at Kansas Speedway. They had their battles throughout the day, and they both looked strong, but it ended up being Larson versus Busher, and Larson got incredibly aggressive on that front stretch. I really thought he was going to wreck Busher when he came all the way down and hit him in the door. What an aggressive move, but it got him the victory just by, by that much. There's been a lot of talk over Kyle Larson in the last couple of weeks, how strong he's been all year. He's been the dominant driver, I'd say, of the 2024 season, but he's lacking wins. He only has one win on the season. He hasn't been able to finish races. That's been a huge talking point this week, that Kyle Larson has struggled to finish these races and get into victory lane. Well, today he did it in the most epic way possible, the closest finish in NASCAR history, point zero zero one winning by one thousandth of a second over Christopher Busher. Before we give the final thoughts, we got to talk about those commercials real quick. Oh! Ew! I didn't have a commercial count. I really need to start counting how many commercial breaks we get during this ra- these races because this had to have been a new record. There was an abundance of commercials during this race. I said it on Twitter during the race. It was very frustrating to get all of these commercials. But at the same time, this is one of the few instances where I completely understood why there was more commercials. Because you have to think about it. NASCAR delayed the race by a couple hours. So they had to buy in to more TV time for Fox. More TV time means more money. They need more money from these commercials. So I think that's why they ran so many commercials. There's usually a lot of commercials during NASCAR races. Let's not fool anybody. But today, it seemed like there was even more than usual. And I think that is why, because of the rain delay, it getting delayed a few hours forced NASCAR to fork up a couple extra bucks for a little bit more TV time. But commercials and NASCAR and Fox's coverage has been awful all season. It's somehow gotten worse compared to last season. And I see everybody on Twitter talking about it. 
And they're not wrong. All right, let's get my final thoughts on the Advent Health 400 at Kansas Speedway. These next-gen cars really struggle on the super speedways, the short tracks, and the road courses. I've been over this on the channel a couple times. The mile and a half, the intermediate tracks are amazing. I really enjoyed the racing we saw out there today. We saw comers and goers once again, like we saw at Dover. But we definitely saw more passing. We saw air have less of an issue on the driver's performance today. I just don't see how this race could have gotten any better. I just, I don't. It was such an exciting, fulfilling race, if that makes sense. It was fulfilling. I'm heartbroken, not just for Kyle Busch, but I'm I'm really heartbroken for that number 17 team and Chris Busher because they thought they won the race. There was a good 10 seconds there that the 17 team and Chris Busher thought they won the race. Even from certain angles, it still looks like they won the race. There's even this picture circulating online where it looks like once you go above the apron, the start-finish line extends like an extra inch or something. I've analyzed that picture, and it looks like even if there wasn't that little line there, Kyle Larson still would have edged him out by just a little bit. But it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. It's been a tough season, not just for Chris Buescher and RFK Racing, but it's been a really tough year for Ford. I made a video just last week talking about the struggles of Ford and NASCAR. They haven't won a race all season in any of the three primary series. And once again, they come up short. Just really disappointing for Chris Buescher, for RFK Racing, and for Ford. Buescher did get a second place finish though, and that is a great finish for him. But I know leaving the track right now, he's not happy with the second place. He has to be disappointed. And Kyle Larson, he finally finishes the job. Had a great race, had a great finish, was able to finish it off and get to victory lane for the second time this season. It was the wrong Kyle in victory lane, if you ask me. It should have been Rowdy. It was Rowdy's day. But we're done with Kansas Speedway. The Advent Health 400 is over with. Next weekend, we head to Darlington for throwback weekend. Should be a great race. Darlington tends to put on some great racing, some exciting racing, and it's always great to have a little bit of nostalgia with the race it being throwback week i will post a video at some point this week where i'm going to go over all the throwback schemes this week what do i think about them and which throwback scheme do i think is the best so next week is darlington i hope everyone enjoyed kansas speedway if you didn't enjoy kansas speedway don't bother to watch some of you were enjoying Kansas Speedway so much, I saw some people asking for Chicagoland and Kentucky to come back. I'll definitely agree with Chicagoland. I don't know about Kentucky. But that'll do it for me here today. Thank you for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace. It should have been